Hello and welcome to Intro to AI Automation with Zapier. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this week's video, we're gonna take a break from Excel efficiency and automation. If you're familiar with this channel, you know I love Excel and talk about it all the time, but there are certain things we need to automate outside of the grid. And for that, I like to use Zapier. So today I'm gonna share one of the projects from my new AI and automations training. Hopefully it helps. AI Weather Report, Project 2. All right, the goal for this project is to automate a daily weather report email, but instead of getting a boring standard forecast, we're gonna use AI to rewrite the weather report in a more interesting, funny, or dramatic way. And while this seems like a fun weather-related task, the real goal here is to get you to use Zapier and get comfortable using its built-in apps. And this is a baby step that'll help us warm up before we integrate Zapier with many external tools like Gmail or Excel, which we'll do in future projects. Summary, we're gonna fetch the daily weather report using Zapier's built-in weather app. We're gonna modify the weather text that we get back using Zapier's built-in AI tool to make it more engaging and be more like a weather report who is a dynamic weather reporter. Um, and then we're gonna send ourselves an email using Zapier's built-in email app. Key takeaways. Basically, this is a hands-on Zapier project where we're only gonna use built-in Zapier apps. AI access. So in our first project, we accessed AI from a web user interface from the web, right? From the websites. And that's how we access AI. But I wanted to introduce this project because there's other ways to access AI tools. In other words, from an API. If you're not familiar with that term, it means application programming interface. So if we just pause for a second, these AI tools are available in a variety of different methods. One is by going to the website. The other is almost like behind the scenes. And it almost feels like one computer is talking directly to the other computer or server um, behind the scenes. And that's where we're gonna be able to get a lot of automation done. It's one thing to go to a website and type a prompt and get a response. It's completely another to have computers go to the AI server, get the information it needs, and then include it in a zap. So that's exactly why I designed this project. This is gonna help us leverage AI-powered automation in a hopefully fun and engaging way. Again, the key isn't to get you the weather report, the key is to get you used to using Zapier and integrating AI with it. And this really lays the foundation for future Zapier projects, which are gonna involve other tools, Gmail, Excel, and dozens of others. By the end of this project, you'll have a fun weather email landing in your inbox every day, completely automated and customized by AI. Plus, you'll feel more confident using Zapier's core automation features before we move on to more advanced workflows, or Zaps. Zapier intro. All right, basically what's the purpose of Zapier? Well, what it is, is it's an online service, and it is basically a central platform that transmits information to and from a variety of online applications. So it helps us to automate workflows by connecting different apps and services. And we can integrate like thousands of apps to streamline work and processes. Now, that's a little abstract, so let's make it more concrete. Here's a screenshot of just a few of the thousands of apps that Zapier can connect to. And the central hub of Zapier connects the apps so that they can work with each other, even when there's no direct integration between two specific apps. So for example, every time a new Google Form entry is made, you wanna send a copy to Microsoft Excel. Now, Google Forms has a direct integration with Google Sheets, but you want it to go to Excel instead of Google Sheets. And this is where Zapier comes in. When there's no direct integration, you go through Zapier. And really, that's just like the airlines. Like, when a direct flight is available, great, we'll take it. But direct flights are limited. So instead, the airline carriers fly through their hubs. And that system enables far more combinations of departures and arrival locations. And this is Zapier, the central hub. So when two apps we're working with has a direct integration, great. But when they don't, ha, that's when Zapier comes to save the day. Basic use. All right, the basic element in Zapier is called a zap. 
And a zap is basically an automation, or you might think of it as a little workflow. And zaps start with a trigger. So for example, we get a new email and different apps have different triggers. Then the next step in the zap is gonna be an action. So we choose an action that happens automatically when the trigger is activated. For example, we wanna save the email to a spreadsheet. And once we define the trigger and the action or actions, we activate or publish the zap and it'll just run in the background. Example triggers. All right, let's make it even more concrete. Here is Excel online and these are the triggers, just to give you an idea. So we can start a zap when there is a new row that has been entered into a worksheet, when there is a new worksheet created, when a new row in the table is added, or when a row is updated. So you can have Zapier monitor these conditions, and when one of those things happens, it's gonna trigger a new Zap. So what are some actions? Well, these are some example actions. Again, we'll use Excel as the example. We can have a Zap add a new row, add a row to a table, update a row, find a row, and you get the idea. So it's through the combination of a trigger and one or more actions that build our Zaps. Now, in addition to connecting thousands of applications, Zapier has also built a bunch of internal apps, which you can think of as utilities. And we can use these in our Zaps as needed. And don't worry, we're gonna be covering a variety of these in upcoming projects. I just wanna take baby steps. AI weather report, project two. All right, so we're in Zapier. Let's go ahead and create a Zap. Now. In this case, we want this email to come to us every morning. So let's go to trigger and we're gonna use the Zapier schedule trigger. And this allows us to trigger this Zap based on some type of time schedule. Let's go to trigger event. And here we can see we can start this every day at a specific time, every hour, every month, every week or custom. In this case, we're gonna go with every day. Depending on what you're working on, check out the other options. Then we click continue to get to the configure tab. Now we can pick the time of day. Let's go with, um, let's go with 5.30 a.m. Do we wanna trigger it on the weekends, yes or no? I'll go with yes, we click continue. Now let's go ahead and test this trigger. It basically comes back and it says it worked. Here's the sample record and these are the fields this trigger returns. Let's go ahead and continue with that record. Okay. Now for the action step. Well, let's use the built-in Zapier weather app. What's our action? Well, in this case, we're just gonna get the current weather, but we could also get tomorrow's forecast. So feel free to play around. Here, we're gonna go with get current weather. Then we're gonna click continue to get to the configure tab. Okay, we can see that there's two required fields and a couple of optional fields. It looks like it needs the latitude and longitude. I'm not really sure like how to get that, so let's use this little tool tip here. The latitude of the location you wanna check. If you don't know the latitude, look it up here. Oh, very helpful. Let me go ahead and click this here link. Okay, let's get it from somewhere. How about, well, let's make it interesting. Juneau, Alaska, and click find. Now we have the latitude and longitude, so I'm just gonna control C copy, cruise back over to Zapier, paste. Let's go to longitude, cruise over here, do a standard copy and paste. And the units, let's go with Fahrenheit. All right, now we continue. And let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, these are the fields that that trigger returns. Now we need to spice this up with AI. So I'm gonna click add a step and I'm gonna pick AI by Zapier. And by the way, you could certainly choose other AI tools and in future projects we will, but this AI by Zapier step is really nice. Okay, what's the action event? We're gonna analyze and return data. It's our only choice, so no worries. And now we click initiate prompt assistant. Now, if you're really good at AI prompting, you could type the prompt in here manually if you wanted. You could also refer to previous values, but I've had really good luck with the prompt builder. Basically, we describe in a few sentences what we want, and then it will generate a more effective AI prompt to pass to the AI engine. 
And before I move on, I do want to say that we have templates. So we could extract geographic data, identify business name, create outline from text, analyze message sentiment, translate, and many other options. So depending on what you're working on, definitely check out these really nice templates. I'm gonna go back to Prompt Builder, and I'm gonna say this. You are a dynamic weather reporter. I want you to take the basic weather data that I will provide and create a lively weather report using drama, humor, and any additional interesting commentary. Okay, then I'll click generate prompt. So now what AI is doing is it's taking my steps and it's creating a prompt that can be sent to another AI. <laughs> it's an amazing world that we live in. Okay, and now we have this prompt and this is the prompt that is going to be used to create our output. So a couple of things to note here. First of all, it gives us some placeholders where we can put in some basic data. And second of all, it gives us this output field. And this is really extremely helpful when we're working with Zapier. We could tell this step to generate output fields like weather reports or temperature or humidity. And those fields then are gonna be used in subsequent Zapier steps. So we'll definitely get into additional field types and how this all works in upcoming projects. But I wanna let you know, basically what happens is we take these inputs, it's gonna send it to an AI and it's gonna generate this output, whatever output we want. So then we're just gonna substitute this. Instead of temperature, we're gonna get it from a previous step. And I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna go with this. And by the way, as, as I was preparing for this, this prompt generator didn't create it in this format. I recreated these, these value points manually, basically by typing temperature and then giving this value. Humidity, giving the value. So we got lucky here and it created this for us, but if you're running this on your own, you might not get these field formats, but you can just create those manually. Let's go grab humidity, which is here. I'm also gonna add a parent temperature and I'm gonna grab this. Let's also grab wind speed. I'm also gonna give it wind bearing. And just some general conditions, which is this summary. Okay. Now let's continue. And let's test it. Okay, and here's the result of the test. Good day, weather warriors. Grab your umbrellas and prepare for a splashy showdown as our forecast reveals a cool 40 degrees, perfect for a cozy cup of cocoa or perhaps a light jog if you're feeling brave. And, and here we basically have this. So this is AI creating a weather report from the raw data that we provide. So let's go ahead and click, um, well, we need another step. So our next step is to send this to us. So we're gonna use email by Zapier. We are going to send an outbound email, click continue to get to the configure step, send it to, don't send it to me, um, send it to yourself. And we're gonna to say today's weather report. And then we are going to grab the field. And as you can see, we could pick fields from any of these or from multiple of these. In other words, we can pick multiple fields to include here. The one we want though is from this AI step and it is the weather report field. So you remember we set up that field output, so this is the output fields that come from the AI step. And there could be one or we could set up more. We select it. Close this. I'm not gonna do an attachment. From name is gonna be Zapier Weather. And by the way, 
I've learned that I usually like to document the source zap because you get this email and you're like, wait a second, what zap is like sending this? So I'm going to call this AI weather report. And while I'm thinking about it, I should rename this zap. So let's go to rename. I'm going to call this AI weather report enter. Okay. And then we could populate any other fields that we want. Ours looks fine. We're going to continue. And then we're going to test this step. Okay. Sure enough, it showed up. Today's weather report. Good day, weather warriors. Grab your umbrellas. Prepare for a splashy showdown as our forecast reveals a cool 40 degrees. The wind, a cheeky 15 miles per hour swirling in from the southeast at a bearing of 130. And if it's trying to help our hair achieve that just dodged a hurricane look. <laughs> uh, and what's that? Oh yes, a light rain is gently falling like nature's way of reminding us that the outdoor plans might need a little reconsideration. So whether you're donning your best raincoat or just completing a Netflix binge, today's weather is here to entertain and perhaps drench us all. And then here's that source zap in case we want to go make any changes to it. I've just found that's an easy way to kind of backtrack it. All right. So after our tests, it looks good. So we can publish. And now every morning at 530, I'm going to get a weather report from Alaska. Now, of course, we're going to edit this for any location we're interested in. So we can again, click edit. That's going to put us into edit mode, and then we can populate different latitude and longitude values as desired. All right, so that's our Zapier AI weather report project. It's helping us set the foundation of Zapier, getting you comfortable with it, because we're going to rely on this tool a lot in future projects. Thanks so much. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 